Dan Willis here, and we're talking about your Equifax dispute and the most common stumbling block. Now, this is where most people just give up and live with bad credit, and the big challenge is getting Equifax to deem your dispute valid and subsequently investigate or reinvestigate the item, because for most people, I mean the overwhelming majority, chances are you're more likely to win the lottery than getting Equifax to dispute to deem your first initial dispute as valid. They're almost guaranteed to find it frivolous and they'll request more information. You should comply and provide them that information. But the reason they're virtually guaranteed to find your dispute frivolous is because this is only an expense for the credit bureaus. That's why Congress felt it so necessary to pass federal law way back in 1970 that requires the credit bureaus to do this. The truth is, in this $4 billion per year industry, the credit bureaus and credit reporting, not one nickel is earned from correcting your credit report, even the most obvious of errors. Instead, it's only an expense. And the money that they spend investigating even the most valid, legitimate, and obvious of errors on your credit report, that money otherwise is profit and its returns paid to their stockholders. Now, in the 40 plus years that the Fair Credit Reporting Act has been on the book, don't you think it makes seems reasonable that the credit bureaus would invest some time, if not huge amounts of time and huge sums of money to at least find a way to minimize this expense? Of course! Now, the best way they've found is to simply stall. This is why they'll ask for more information. It's just a stall tactic. It's to simply do nothing because most people will just give up and live with bad credit for seven long, expensive, and embarrassing years. If you'd like some help, you can get a free credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Now, in 2013, just as an example, Julie Miller woke up one day and discovered 38 bogus collection accounts on her credit report. She followed the Fair Credit Reporting Act, she filed her dispute, and two years later, after one dispute after another was found frivolous and she complied with their request for more information, she sent her pay stubs, W-2s, hair samples, DNA, and her firstborn child. And yes, that's a small exaggeration. Nevertheless, after two years, they were still finding her dispute frivolous. So of course, she finally got fed up and actually sued them in a federal jury awarded her $18.6 million. That's huge. And yes, that was later reduced by a federal judge. But here's the big kicker. Her real life damages after the reduction, a federal judge is $180,000 for her compensatory damages. Those are that's the money that's supposed to make her whole again. But a federal judge found Equifax's behavior so egregious, so obnoxious, so unreasonable that a federal judge gave Julie Miller $1.62 million as the punitive damages. That's for the annoyance, that's for the aggravation, and it's supposed to set an example to the other credit bureaus not to screw over every other consumer. That's nine times as much. That doesn't happen in civil suits. Now, here's the God's honest truth. The credit bureaus have been repeatedly fined by the Federal Trade Commission, that is our government, the FTC, along with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the CFPP, another one of our actual, that's government bodies, 60 Minutes did a report not that long ago just about how challenging it is for the average consumer, the everyday, hardworking, individual American to actually dispute your credit report. And in 2015, all three credit bureaus agreed and collectively paid $6 million to 31 state attorney generals for allegedly violating the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Fair Credit Reporting Act's federal law. The state attorney generals shouldn't even be involved with that. Nevertheless, the credit bureau's behavior was so egregious, so over the top, that even the state attorney generals were able to get involved. And here's the real flat out truth. And first, if you'd like some help, you can get a free credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Here's the million dollar question. As we shared here in the previous video, 
In 2012, the FTC studied the accuracy of Americans' credit reports, and they found millions of errors on millions of Americans' credit reports. Now, if we know that our credit report isn't accurate, even according to our government, and we know the credit bureaus don't comply with the Fair Credit Reporting Act over 40 years, they've been fined time and time and time again by our government, then why on earth would we let the credit bureaus be the person and the people that first decide if your dispute is valid or if it's frivolous? It doesn't make any sense at all until you peel one more layer back. And the reason is because the credit bureaus, every single year, they pump millions and millions and millions of dollars into Washington lobbyists to influence our politricksters. Now it makes perfect sense, right? Of course. Now, <laughs> there's such a clear, obvious conflict of interest for anybody looking at this. The credit bureaus seem to be like the last person in the whole earth that you'd let... First, decide if consumer disputes are valid and you will investigate and spend money, or if they're invalid and you don't investigate, don't spend money, and instead pay more money to your stockholders. And we need to share, there has been an amendment to the Fair Credit Reporting Act. We believe this is nothing more than to make the process even more complicated, but you can bypass the credit bureaus and dispute your lender or creditor directly if you so choose. There may be rare, rare examples where this is applicable, such as identity theft, but generally and traditionally, it's with the credit bureaus because the credit bureaus are the ones that are actually creating that credit report about you. And just as one last example, <laughs> it, many moons ago, the, our government required the credit bureaus to create toll-free phone numbers so consumers could call in and file their dispute this way. But here's the deal. What's the one thing our government didn't require the credit bureaus to do? And what the credit bureaus didn't do? They didn't actually hire or have staff members to answer these phones. I mean, literally. There's reports from consumers waiting over 30 hours on hold. This is the most obvious. Couldn't be more or less respectful or more disrespectful. The credit bureaus are not your friend. They're not my friend. They're not your friend. They're not any consumer's friend at all. They're friends of our politricksters who make it a practice to screw you and me. That's how they... It's unbelievable, but you need to know if you, with your dispute, if you also have that ding, that item, let's say a charge off, for example, on your Equifax credit report and your TransUnion and your Experian credit report, you're going to have to file three individual separate disputes. Each one of these companies has a unique credit file about you. And the point and the takeaway is just getting an item off of your Equifax credit report, that's not going to remove it from your TransUnion or your Experian credit report. You're going to have to also address that with those two companies. But the good news is, and the truth is, in 2016 alone, over 9 million negative items were removed from consumer credit reports. This includes late payments, collections, charge-offs, judgments, liens, repossessions, foreclosures, bankruptcies, and so many more. One of the best credit repair firms, and we encourage our members to consider this, is the Credit Pros. They've helped their clients remove late payments, collections, charge-offs, judgments, liens, repossessions, foreclosures, bankruptcies, and so many more negative credit report items. If you'd like some help, you can get a free credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Again, that's for a free credit consultation, and the toll-free phone number is 1-877-418-7596. This is Dan Willis. We're going to include a link in the description below over to an article on our website for the full story. Of course, visit and subscribe because we've got a free report available there, the seven proven ways to boost your credit score. And of course, subscribe and join our congregation. Have a wonderful day. Looking forward to talking to you again here soon.